Continuing here on the Exam Room Podcast, brought to you by the Physicians Committee with the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Advanced course day on the show, as I said at the top. This is really exciting to me. We did Gut Bacteria 101 last year, and now we have graduated. We should consider ourselves, I guess, sophomores at this point in the gut bacteria spectrum. Uh, this is Gut Bacteria 201. I'm sitting across the table with uh, a, a gut bacteria expert in her own right, and that is Dr. Hanna Kaliova. She's the Director of Clinical Research here at the Physicians Committee. Welcome back to the program. Hi, Chuck. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming back. Uh, let's get nerdy here. You ready to get nerdy? Yeah, absolutely. All right. I love nerdy. Anytime. Out. Yeah, man. Let's. All right. Nerd out. Here we go, kids. Uh, as I understand it, there are, when in terms of gut microbiome, there are four main uh, enterotypes, correct? Right. Let's start with what is an enterotype. Let's define that for the listeners first. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's start with uh, the most important aspect of our microbiome, which is the diversity. So how many uh, kinds of bacteria live in your gut? Uh, the more kinds of bacteria live in your gut, the better for your your overall uh, bacteria, bacterial health mm-hmm. uh, and your gut health. Um, that means if someone uh, has only you know five types of bacteria in the gut and they use an antibiotic, and the the antibiotic you know wipes away three three types of out of five, you know that's a that's a major uh, major shift uh, and uh, potentially uh, threatening for the person compared to another person who would have 120 types of bacteria living in the gut, right? You, you sound a lot like a, a financial planner right now who stresses <laughs> having a diverse portfolio. A portfolio, right, yeah, right. Exactly. So you don't just want one or two different kinds of stocks. Like you want mm-hmm. a diverse portfolio. That way, right. if one takes a hit, you're still in pretty good shape on a bunch of others. Absolutely. That's exactly what we're saying. Interesting. Now, how can we get this healthy portfolio? Here we go. Uh, so the uh, an, a fascinating study that has been done uh, compared children living in rural Africa and children living in the United States. Mm-hmm. And they looked at their diversity of their gut microbiome. And uh, children living in rural Africa had a lot more diversity in their gut microbiome compared to children living in the United States. Hmm. Now, what is it about living in Africa? Do we need to move to Africa in order to get, you know, a greater richness, a greater diversity in our gut microbiome? I would assume not, because we certainly uh, basically have every food known to man available here in the U.S. That doesn't mean that we necessarily eat it, though. That's correct. So that's yes. that's I'm going to say no, we do not need to move to Africa. <laughs> Final answer. Exactly. And we we can learn the lessons from Africa, right? So right. what they can what do they consume in Africa? Uh fruits, grains, vegetables, exactly. all kinds of produce stuff. Uh that's what we can get here too. Sure. Sure. So uh this this particular study it it uh, did they quantify how much more diversity there was? Was there any way that we can kind of put a number on that? Like in in terms of, you know, there was 50% more diversity or uh, or is it just basically a, a wide a wide margin and I know you're looking through the through the study now like I did not mean to put you on the spot uh, you should you should know, you know that if you're listening to this I, this is a very in-depth study that I just quizzed her on uh, so this particular study compared children living in Bangladesh com- compared to children living in the United States uh-huh. um, and I'll, can I show uh, the yeah plot you can hold it right up to that, that camera right there yep so right here So you can see that the difference uh, is more than 50%. Wow. Yeah. That's substantial. It's a huge difference. Okay. Okay. I want to put a pin on that. I want to come back to uh, the enterotypes. Uh, because uh, and, uh, we, we didn't get a chance to answer that one. Just too, just one more thing to mention. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's not only about eating your fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. It's also about how they're being produced and how they're being, being eaten. So, for example, if we overuse sanitizers uh, and if we just clean all the fruits uh, with soap, you know, just to be sure there's no bacteria left... Uh, you know, that's, that also creates imbalance compared with when you go to the country to visit your grandma and like 
pick the apple from the tree. Right, right, right. So it's more beneficial to be like more connected to nature and not be like overzealous when cleaning your vegetables and fruits. Well, we are a bit of a germaphobic society yeah, by and large. Yeah, that's correct. You know, uh, hand sanitizer is readily available everywhere, and I'm not sure that they even manufacture soap anymore that isn't antibacterial. So, you know, it, it just seems like by and large we're we're afraid of germs, and it, maybe that's even hurting us a little bit. I know that that's not the particular topic that we're touching on, but but it does kind of make you wonder when you're talking mm -hmm. about overwashing fruits and right. vegetables and washing all of that bacteria away. Wouldn't it kind of stand that you be kind of the same principle when it comes to just washing your hands or choosing soap? Um, you know, the more we're connected to nature, the more um, bacteria diversity we're, con we're consuming, the more bacteria diversity we will get in, in our gut. Fascinating. Fascinating. Okay. And types. let's go back to that okay. real quick before yes. we move on to these uh, other studies that we have here. Uh, there are four main types of them. I, four main, which right. means that there are plenty of others. Exactly. Let's let's get the biggies out of the way. What are they? Uh, so number one is Prevotella. Okay. Prevotella uh, is considered to be anti-inflammatory, which means very beneficial, protecting you against inflammation. Uh, so anyone uh, who's struggling with, for example, asthma or rheumatoid arthritis, any autoimmune disease uh, may benefit from this bacteria, but also people struggling with their body weight will benefit from having more Prevotella in their gut. All right, so that's a good guy. And uh, this type of bacteria uh, seems to be responding very well to a plant-based diet. So a plant-based diet tends to increase your prevotella in, in your gut. Good to know. Okay, so that's number one. That's clearly, number one. Clearly a good guy. Yes. Who, who else is on the list? And uh, we also need to mention uh, that some of the bacteria are not so clearly a bad or a good guy. Um, it also depends on the proportions. And on, you know, in some context, it may be more beneficial to have, uh, you know, more of this bacteria. But in another context where you have more um, of other bad guys, it may be beneficial to have less of this bacteria. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're also talking about some ratios and some balance. And that's exactly uh, the case with number two, which is Bacteroidetes. Bacteroidetes um, is a family or a, a genus of bacteria that are considered to be pro-inflammatory. That means they promote inflammation. Um, they um, are able to tolerate bile well. So they are commonly present in the guts of omnivores, uh, people who consume meat and animal protein and saturated fat. Uh, however, these are not the worst guys. Uh, so, you know, sometimes even an increase in bacteroidetes may not be as harmful as um, an increase in number three, which is Firmicutes. Okay. Uh, and Firmicutes tends to be even more pro-inflammatory. Uh, so we're also talking about the ratio be between Bacteroidetes and Firmicutes. Uh, but in fact, it's a triangle, you know, between Prevotella and Bacteroidetes, Firmicutes. It's about the balance. And number four is Ruminococcus, um, which is another um, another type of bacteria, another family, if you want. Uh, and uh, the the abundance is about the same uh, on animal and plant-based diets. So we're not completely sure about the significance of this particular bacteria. Mm. That's a, so that's a, that's another tweener. That's, that's what I call it. When they're not a good guy, they're not a bad guy. They're a tweener. It's an in-between, in-between. Um, coincidentally, all, all of these uh, enterotypes, they sound like they're ancient philosophers, you know, mm -hmm. bacteroidetes, you know, didn't, didn't he write the uh, Iliad and the Odyssey? And uh, to illustrate the importance of the composition of gut bacteria, mm -hmm. um, you know, we can uh, look into one study that compared the gut microbiota composition in children in rural Africa living in a village of Burkina Faso and between European children. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, so there was a marked difference in uh, the gut bacteria composition. So the previous study looked only at the diversity, you know, between children living in Bangladesh and between the children living in the U.S. Right. And the Bangladeshi children had a greater diversity. They had more kinds of bacteria. Right. But what about the composition? And this is uh, exactly this study. Uh, and this study found that uh, the children living in, Bang- in Burkina Faso uh, in the in one village in Africa, um, they had more prevotella. That's the you know that's the good guy. Yeah. That's number one that, that we mentioned as a protective guy in in the gut. Uh, like by large, the their content was fifty three percent of prevotella in their gut, compared to only twelve percent in the children living in Europe. Holy cow! Yeah. Holy cow. So that's a huge, huge difference. Big time. And uh, we're also talking about uh, the ratio between um, bacteroidetes and firmicutes, uh, which was greater in uh, the children living in rural Africa. Uh, and now, a fun fact, the ratio be- between bacteroidetes and firmicutes is responsible uh, for about 22% of your cardiorespiratory fitness. So when you go to the gym, you know, your performance is, uh, can, can be explained um, by 22% by your composition in your gut. And that's before you even step on the exactly. treadmill. Exactly, uh, yeah. So like... All, it, 22% is set, It's, it's you know? Wow, yeah. before I can, you walk in the gym, 22% is already w- accounted for. Okay. We can uh, analyze your stool and predict it for you, what what your performance will be looking like. But only 22%. So uh, come on. Only 22%? <laughs> tell that to 80. a marathon runner, right? You know, tell yeah, that to, you yeah. know, to somebody who runs track. I mean, that's 22% a good point. is yes. a huge difference. Right. Huge difference. But also not an excuse not to exercise, right? (laughs)